Thanks, Dr. Carla, and uh, we're back here again for another discussion on housing um, in the same week. But probably it's uh, probably an important area, so probably don't have a chance to go back over some of the information that we discussed and, and update you on what's happening rebuilding in Ireland. But also, um, there was a lot of discussion earlier on the week, and there's a lot of misinformation put out there as well. And unfortunately, a lot of inaccurate and generalised commentary also um, came from a lot of my colleagues across the floor too, which was disappointing. Um, I, I know for most people. The, on Tuesday night was about politics, but actually we, we'd like to discuss policy sometimes as well when it comes to housing and housing solutions. And there was a lot of speeches here that didn't go anywhere near uh, policy and just focus on politics. A uh, strange approach from some, I have to say. But I, I want to be very clear that when there's good, sensible ideas, we will try to tweak rebuilding Ireland and add them in. Yes, we have difference of opinions on some, some ways we do our business, like in relation to large sites and so on. That's fair enough. But there's other areas. If there's little quirky things we can do here and there, we'll do that. Like, I mean, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, John and Sullivan, you left, but you, you had asked a request in one of your speeches that we do something with a, a Travel Pacific accommodation, and, we, and we, we, took, we took on board that idea, and we are spending that money to buy houses as well. So we are willing to listen and, and change when there's sensible and things and uh, based on evidence. But there was a lot of commentary here last week that wasn't, that wasn't clear as well, that's all I can say. So it is disappointing that some members of the House chose to use the challenging and difficult circumstances that some families and individuals find themselves in to score political points, rather than to put forward solutions that can help those households who are experiencing homelessness and housing issues. I was trying to say on the night as well that I do understand that most people here have come forward with suggestions here and there, or pieces of legislation, or a bill, or some ideas. But when, when I talk about a full plan, our job with Rebuilding Ireland was a full plan, a whole of government that brings all the government departments together. And like the approach to jobs, the action plan for jobs, there's action by action, list by list, that has to be carried out. And I accept that many people here have different in interventions, different ideas, but I have not seen a full, whole, complete plan by anybody that brings us site by site uh, to actually make it happen on the ground. It's all very fine to have some nice suggestions, some ideas. I won't, Fianna Fáil said, I won't say just build 50,000 houses next year, just like that, I just pick them out of the sky. Like, it doesn't work that way. Um, Mary Lou claims that she's the most ambitious plan for social housing. Actually, when you add up all the figures for the next 10 years, it's not as ambitious as the current government's. So, you know, let's, you know, let's, have, a, let's have full plans and let's fully tease them out. If you want us to scrap our plan, show me a full plan from somebody else, not just bits and pieces of one, because somebody has to put it all together. And that's what we've done in government, brought it all together. And I'm, I accept you have different ideas as well, but come with a full plan if you really want to scrap ours, if you think ours is not working as well. So I'd like today to clarify some of the factual inaccuracy, inaccuracies that we heard earlier this week and to talk about the homeless this government and rebuilding Ireland are concerned with and are doing our best to deliver as well. And again, I didn't get a chance to say on Tuesday night, we absolutely accept that there's far too many people in, a, in, a home, in an emergency situation and without a house. There's no denying that. We published the figures. Uh, we don't hide behind them. We publish them loud and clear. We're the ones that do the count. Um, we do the rough sleepers count. We do all that to actually genuinely put the truth out there. It would be easier to hide from it, but we don't. Um, so, and that they're far too high. No one's denying that. Uh, and we can't intervene quick enough in some cases, which is a shame, a great shame. And it means they leave some people and their family and their children in emergency accommodation, which is not ideal for anybody. And none of us would like that, to be fair. So just to be clear on that, we're not trying to claim everything's rose in the garden and there's no issues. That's not the case at all. We know, as of today, there's still 1,700 plus families who have not got a home, who need a home. Uh, and the quicker, the, the quicker that we can do it, the better. And that's as simple as that. I can't be any clearer on that as well. At the very core of Rebuilding Ireland is the objective of accelerating the delivery of social, affordable and private housing. And it's all three while also supporting families and individuals who are currently experiencing homelessness and who may be at risk of homelessness in the future. And again, what's different now compared to what happened three or four years ago, probably even five years ago, we're able to intervene a lot quicker and families are asking for help a lot quicker. They're probably possibly in 14, 15, 16, they didn't know in some cases families could come forward and get help, maybe negotiate with the banks or get help with their landlords. A lot of that's changed and they do notify us now much earlier if it's a problem and we can intervene to prevent it in the first place in some cases. But that didn't happen probably in 13, 14, 15 because we were, probably weren't equipped as a state or ready for it uh, to, if the truth be known and the money wasn't there either to back it up. But so now we can, so people probably became homeless very quickly in those years and maybe we could have prevented it if we were able to step in at an earlier stage. But now we do and, and hang, thankfully that is making a difference with some of the numbers as well. We have been working tirelessly to rebuild sufficient capacity in the housing market. As 29 draws to a close, I think it's an appropriate and opportune time to outline the progress that has been made and to inform the House of some future areas of priority action as well. First of all, when it comes to homelessness, and addressing homelessness continues to be a key priority for this government and for my department in particular. And who anybody says it's not, is, 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 you know, that's crazy language, because why wouldn't it be? No sane person, no matter what side of the house you might come from, would want anybody to be in homelessness. So please don't keep telling me we're, we're ideologically opposed to helping or doing anything or opposed to social. We're not. No sane person would be. Of course we want to help. 
And of course, governments want to do all they can in this. So it is a priority area, and priority number one. And trying to give the impression that it's not is really only silly stuff, to be honest with you. We are working very closely with local authorities and our NGO service delivery partners to deliver solutions for those individuals and families experiencing homelessness. And a lot of the NGOs, who have a lot to add and commentary on this as well, work very closely with us and work with our local authorities in providing housing solutions and in providing services and do a good job. And they also have a job to advocate as well, and I accept that. Um, but a lot of them are working with us, and I compliment their work al 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 alongside our local authorities and alongside our housing bodies. And again, there was an impression given in some of the speeches um, here on Tuesday that local authorities are not responsible for housing, and we're trying to move away and make it all about housing bodies. I've, I've gone to all your local council chambers and made it very clear. That is not the case. Local authorities are front and centre to this. And I compliment the, the, the difference they've made over the last three years when they've been given the chance and the X-ray on the staff to do this. They've come a long way to reach their targets and to drive a new pipeline of projects. Naturally, there's always pressure on to do more, and we'll constantly ask them to do more. But the, compared to where we were three years ago, because it was probably less than a couple of hundred social houses, um, now it's up at over 10,000 this year, a combination of all the different schemes as well. So local authorities are driving that. If any housing body wants to bring a housing project forward, it's in conjunction with local authority. It's either with them or under their instruction and link back to our department as well. It's not a case of they are leading the way. Local authorities are in charge, number one. And I want to be clear on that. And there's nobody there's, on our side have any doubts about that, but there's a lot of confusion being spread on the far sides about that as well. Um, so while we are unfortunately seeing more individuals in emergency accommodation, it's worth noting that between October 15 and 16, the numbers of individuals in emergency accommodation increased by 34%. The reason I give that figure is to try and show that a couple of years ago, the figures were going up by 30, 40, 50% a year. We don't see that now. They're still far too high. And we've had a couple of months for the number of families and the number of, uh, not the number of families, but the number of people in emerging condition has gone up. And that's really, really disappointing. Um, but it's not jumping the way it was jumping by 30 or 40 per cent in a year. And that means that we're beginning to make the right progress here. The trends are going the right way. Not quick enough. And we want to, but you have to stop the acceleration, first of all, and then try and bring it back down, then eventually end it. But you ha it, it, it have to, it, it was 30 or 40, 50 per cent in some years. Even at one stage, I think the number of children in emerging population went up by 54 per cent in one year. Thankfully, if you compare last year, it's 1 per cent. So that's still not enough. But it's, it's a major point of progress that we're trying to build on as well, as quickly as we possibly can. The quarterly performance reports published by Minister Murphy showed that more adults, families and their children are moving from homelessness to a home and the rate of exit is increasing. In the first nine months of this year, 4,389 adults, along with their children, left homelessness and moved to a home, a figure of 17 per cent higher than for the first nine months of 2018. Again, I'm not saying it's enough, but it's a big difference on last year, which was a big difference in the year before. And if we keep going with those trends, we'll eventually get on top of this, and that's what we're trying to do here. In Dublin, where 75 per cent of families experiencing homelessness are located, 786 families moved from emergency accommodation to a home in the first nine months of this year, which again is a 50 per cent increase on the same period of 2018. And again, I repeat, in case there's any doubts, I'm not saying it's enough, but it's a big difference. And if we can continue to do that and repeat that again in the next 12 months, we'll go a long way to solving this. Nearly half the families presenting to homelessness services in the Dublin region were found a home without ever having to ent enter emergency accommodation. And I made that point uh, recently in debates. If we were back here four or five years ago, and if, if 20 families became homeless today, more than likely all 20 would enter emergency accommodation and would be there for a long time. And that, that's, 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 what, that's, that's what was happening. Now if the same 20 families, or different 20 families, present today, 10 of them, we are immediately finding a solution for and finding a home for. Immediately. And that's a positive. Sadly, the other 10 were still going to emergency accommodation, but it would only be for a number of months, whereas a couple of years ago it could be two years or three years. That's all changed. Now, any time spent in emergency accommodation is too long, and I, I want to be clear on that, but it's, it's come down a lot, and that means we're beginning to be able to react a lot quicker and find people at home a lot quicker, which is a, a positive development, but again, we need to keep doing that and more of that. And we can do that because the supply of housing has increased, and that's key to that, because behind all this is the need to have a supply of housing both social, private and affordable. Again, if you look over the last three years, uh, over 12,000 adults have left emergency accommodation with their children. Uh, this year will be over 5,000. Next year will be the same again with the money allocated. That's an important part, because people need to realise and have a little bit of hope in emergency accommodation that there is a way out of this, that it is not going to go on forever and ever. And thankfully, the majority of people who are in emergency accommodation uh, will be out in the next couple of months. But the difficulty is, and the, and the sad part is, 
that every week there's, then the presentations are just as high again, and that's the difficult part here. So I do believe the rent controls and the rent changes that were brought in in May and June this year will make a difference and help reduce the number of people coming forward as presentations. Again, when we analyse the data who's coming forward, it's roughly 50-50, it's economic issues, or issues, rent issues, finance issues for half, the other half has to do with social issues and so on, and we have to intervene in different ways of both. But those rent changes should help with one category as well. Uh, when it comes to rough sleepers, no person or individual should ever have to sleep rough. This has been a key priority of the government, and it's why over 350 new emergency beds were added this year in the Dublin region to the other 800 emergency beds that were put in place since Rebuilding Ireland was published. Last week, an official winter rough sleeper count was carried out, and a total of 92 persons were confirmed as rough sleeping across the Dublin region on that night. There were plenty of spare emergency beds in the region that night, and shelter was available to any person who wished it. And again, I want to be clear on this, and I'm going to be cut off very soon as well. There was no uh, because there's no lack of capacity to offer somebody an emergency bed as in rough sleeping. All right? There's not. And the people, for different reasons, end up rough sleeping. And, and we have to intervene and every which way we can. The most important part is that there is a bed for them, an emergency bed, which again is very temporary. And then you progress through the system onto a more permanent bed as well. And the services are there. And there's new people running that service in the streets of Dublin as well. And they're out every night trying to engage with people and trying to encourage them to come in. And I want to be clear on that. There is capacity there now, and rightly so. And that capacity is in every other county throughout the country as well. And when you ask local authorities, at their, at their, which we do at the summits and at the meetings every week, how quickly are they able to move people through a system and so on, we get the feedback there. And we know that in most cases it's quite a short period of time people's in emergency accommodation in most counties. Dublin and Cork, Galway was a little bit more pressure there. But in the majority of cases, quite quickly they're able to intervene because they use all the different schemes as well. Last point, I'm going to say, I'll hear, I'll hear, I'll stop then. People keep saying to us last week, oh, HAP, shouldn't have HAP, don't have HAP. I want to be very clear on this. If you don't want HAP, that's fine. I'll accept you don't like HAP. But on one condition, that you tell me today where you would house 48,000 families that are using the HAP scheme today. We all know it's not the most perfect scheme long term. Just to be clear, OK? And we'd like to have more long term solutions. But while you are building the new houses, and we're now at that stage of over 10,000 a year. When Thank you're building you them, people need houses today. They can't wait for the social housing delivery next year. So that's why we Thank use you. the HAP scheme. And if you don't like it, show me a better scheme in the short term. Okay, the minister.